We're beginning? Yeah. And action. Welcome. Action! Welcome back to the McDonough Show. <laughs> the heartland. What are we going to call it, Aaron? I uh, think first, with my sidekick, Aaron. Let's give it up. Hey-o. Uh, we you. have the honor <laughs> to have as our guest, our first guest, by the way. Big one. Wow. I'm the first. First guest. first guest. Well, Aaron was actually technically the first guest, yeah, but, but then he count. slid his way into the sidekick, and now, now we're, we're a pair. So you, so you, you get both of us. Man, that's a lot of pressure. Festus. Love it. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I want to talk about everything. I want to talk about growing up in Africa, what it was like coming from Africa to America, going to Vanderbilt, playing the big times, winning the ring, all that stuff, how you got here, your faith journey to get to this point. All Being the, all the, the American stuff. dream, yeah. literally. American we're we're dream talking on the, on the way up, and, and Aaron's like, that, that is literally the American dream. My parents came from Ireland. Came to America. My dad said, make me an American. Walked straight into the Army office, and they shipped him overseas for five years, and he lived the American dream thereafter. Your journey was a little different. You came from Nigeria. Here you come all the way to here. What was it like coming from Nigeria? How much English did you speak, and how much basketball did you know when you came to the States? When I came here, I knew zero basketball. Before we even get into my story, you got to understand, I am living the dream. When I came to the United States, I used to watch you on Desperate Housewives. And to me, it's it's incredible how your life can just change. And, you know, you were on my podcast. I'm branded right now, so Rebuilding the Beast, and telling your story about faith and the things that you have accomplished in your life and the way that you continue to keep your integrity. Like, these are stories that I get to hear now that I never knew that I would be able to sit across, some table, uh, across the table from you, you know? And so um, me crossing the water coming to the United States, I don't know that I even expected this. This is not what the dream was. My goal when I came here was to be a doctor. My my family, you know, my my parents. And he's said, smart. Now, I'm not going to say it's you annoying. messed that up, it's but annoying. you kind of did the good way, huh? <laughs> so handsome, a, athletic, and smart. Oh man, <laughs> package, so, <laughs> ladies. That's the package. <laughs> if he's if he's calling me the package, then you know yeah, I'm doing package, all right. Eh? I'm doing all right. <laughs> um, so you know, being Nigerian, there's this. It, it, I won't call it a stereotype, but like we always we say. Your parents want you to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, and everything else, you're a failure. So right now, I'm kind no of No kidding. You know, and so... That's <laughs> the definition of irony. Yeah. Do you show everybody your ring back home? No, I don't think you're a failure. So, you know, but that's what, like, they always think about academics first. Right. I graduated high school at 14 years old. Did you really? Me. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's how I started. And so when I came to the United States at 14, that was because I graduated high school. Wow. So when they sent me here, I spoke English, yes. You moved to your uncle's place, was it? I moved to my uncle. That's right. And he was a doctor. I was an aspiring doctor. That was who introduced me to basketball. Because everywhere we would go, they asked me, do you play basketball? At the time, I'm 14 years old. I'm 6'4". Yeah. How old is Morgan? Morgan's 16. 16. He's 6'4 now. 6'4". Yeah. So I was Morgan's our oldest son. Morgan's your oldest son. you want to be a doctor? Mm, he, he, just, yeah, he might have to be if he wants to play basketball. He just wants to throw footballs at this he point. Is, he is an all-around <laughs> athlete. By we'll, the way. we'll get into Morgan in a little bit. <laughs> the, the kid just, I mean, they're all just, they're, they're all five of my kids. They're just, our kids are just incredible. But I digress. Back and to. yeah, so the idea was they put this, the, well, the dream was already in my heart, but my parents did everything they could, right? They put all their resources together to send me to America. And it's hard, right? As a 14-year-old kid, you leave your family for the first time. You leave your culture, everything you ever know. I haven't been surrounded by this many white people, at least at that point in my life. I had right, never, right. you know? And so they sent me to a small farm town in California, up north, Where called at? Yuba City. Oh, yeah. You know Yuba? I, I Why don't, would don't you tell anybody, but I was born in Fresno. No way. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> I feel your pain, man. <laughs> yeah. You so, and Peckinpah, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, Yuba City, shout out to all the legends from Yuba City. Big Tyler time. Rich, another guy from there. You know yep. Tyler Rich, the country music singer? Yeah, yeah of course. How can you not? Yeah, so um, uh, moved to Yuba City. It was a whole new thing for me. You know, I went to, I was going to school there. Actually, so the mentality, so what happens when my uncle tells me to go back to high school because I'm 14, he wants me to learn how to play basketball. So he tells me to go back to How much school. basketball have you played at this point? I had never Zero. Played, I had never picked up a ball for, the, like, nothing. And so he wanted me to sign up back in high school so that we would play. And, um, yeah, at 14, so, you'd be a freshman. Yeah, like, he was like, all right, well, you right. can learn with people your age. And so he signs me up. And, like, this story is so complicated because the first team he signs me up is actually on the back of a newspaper, right? It's just a team down the street that's playing summer ball or something, right? And so they're trying to teach me the game. Like, man, like. Dude, you don't know anything. I didn't know. I had no. I kind of was a little chubby. I couldn't run sprints. 
couldn't dribble the ball, couldn't shoot. They're like, oh, uh, man. You could only use your feet, not your hands kind of yeah. thing. Right. Oh, <laughs> man, I couldn't even use that. So That's basketball, right? <laughs> oh, wait, I'm, <laughs> right. I'm out of my league here, guys. <laughs> the music king over here. <laughs> oh, oh sidekicks. But we're also in Laker <laughs> Kingdom, too, by the way. By the way, oh, but, uh, I can't. I, can't, oh, I no. would be remiss. He has to. I knew he was going to go Today is 824. Oh, yes. Kobe Day. Kobe Day. That's why I got the, yep. uh, let's see if I can put it up on camera. I got the Kobe's. On because you know, we got to give a, a shout out to our guy, but yeah. I also have my Boston Celtics socks on just for you. Thank you, okay? thank you, thank right. you. What a sweet guy! So we'll I talk Golden State Celtics later. So we'll get to that point, get to the pain. Bucks you we'll, paid him, paid that's off. right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so you know, he signed me here for a basketball team. I, I end up going back to high school to learn to play the game. But when I get there, you know, the coach sees me for the first time, he gives me the ball. You know, I'm big and black, so they assume that I can play basketball, right? right. And so they give me the ball and they're like, right, show me what you can do. And I, I've never shot a ball at this point. So I took the ball, and, and I just chuck it at the backboard. And, you know, we, we talk about faith, right? And that's what this podcast is, is, is about. The idea that I couldn't see it. Like, I didn't understand, you know, like, I'm trying to figure out how many parts of this story I can tell you because this podcast, we're going to be here all day. I want you to tell us about your first shot in the game too, which is pretty hysterical. Oh, yes. So, you know, that's where I started. You know, the first day of practice, I can't dribble the ball. I can't shoot. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to run a three-man weave. If you guys don't know what that is in basketball, it's one of the most fundamental things that kids do. And I didn't know any of this stuff. And the coach cut me from the team. Ooh. That's how I started this journey. And he was like, it's too late. You're 16 years old at this point, or 15 years old, actually. 15 years old at this point. It's too late. Like, everybody's been playing since they were five years old. And so, um, I don't, to be honest, like, the next part of this journey is a little bit of a blur. Because I don't know if God just put this thing in my heart. I don't know if I just didn't have anything else to do but keep working on the game. I don't, I don't really understand what happens next. My uncle, um, at some point in trying to inspire me to play this game, and actually this is why I got to give a shout out to Kobe. He's trying to inspire me to go play in this high school. He's at, before this, this whole thing, he takes me to a basketball game in Sacramento Kings versus the LA Lakers. I see Kobe for the first time. I've never watched basketball before. I've never seen it live. But even when I see it in the league of everybody, at this point, I can't shoot a dribble, right? So everything that everybody doing in here is like magic to me, right? And Putting the right. ball between your legs. Is, games in Sacramento, he takes Games you in do? Sacramento insane to me and watching even in this league of extraordinary humans Kobe still stands up of course he is killing everybody he had like 49 or 48 I can't remember what it was and hit a game winner that game and I'm like what who is this human you know and so later on down the line even after I get cut I'm still like watching Kobe Bryant tapes like this dude is obsessed with this game and not saying that you know I wanted to be him, like, but I thought there was something about the way he shined his light that really inspired. Want some of that to rub off on you? It did. Yeah, it did. And during the point when I was watching him in the game, my uncle looked at me. He's like, "Yo, you should play." And I'm like, nah, "I don't really want to." You never know. Someday you might be here on the court. And so let me fast forward a little bit because, like I said, we don't have enough time. But we end up playing. I end up signing up for an AAU team. This random guy sees me on the street after I get cut from a basketball team. So when I sign up for um, sign up for AAU, if you guys don't know what that is, that's summer summer ball. So now I'm 16 years old. I'm playing for the first time. Right, this guy's like, yo, I'll I'll push you, but like you gotta understand that you gotta work. I said, okay. So I sign up for his team. I still don't know what I'm doing. I just got cut from the other team because I don't know what I'm doing. Now I got this other team now, this new team. I'm just like, it's only a matter of time until you see how terrible I am. Well, how terrible I am was that my first shot I ever made in the game was against my own team. That's where I started. In basketball, that's pretty impressive. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make the shot? You make the shot. I made the shot. <laughs> On your own hoop. dismay of my teammates. They were so <laughs> mad. Like, yo, what the f What are you doing, Fest? Like, you know? And, you know, at this point, people were laughing at me. You know, all this stuff. Like, and for a kid, that's really a hard moment. Of course. Like, yeah. when I tell this story, like, people laugh. Every time I tell this story, I speak every, at conventions, whatever. People laugh when I tell this part of the story. But I tell it for a reason. Because I want y'all to know where I started. I want y'all to know how it, like, at this point in my journey, this guy who's a stranger, he becomes my basketball coach. He puts his arm around me. He's like, yo, listen, I'm going to be right here with you. And I'm going to work hard with you. But you have to be willing to put the work in. 
And pretty soon, all these people laughing, they're going to be asking you for tickets. But you got to be willing to put the work in. And at this point, I don't know. I'm c- crying. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, I'm just like, man, this is not for me because I can't see How it. long have you been in the States at this point? At this point, I've been in the States for a year and a half. Crazy. Wow. So, yeah. And then from there, two so years go- later. So going through your brain, you're thinking, do I need to go back to Nigeria? Is my life over here? Do I stink? Do I have what it takes Honestly, to be successful? I, I just wanted to, like, after the whole high school thing, I go to a junior college. I'm like... I, I, basketball is not going to work out, so I'm, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to. That's the way. That's how I'm going to get to where I need to get to, which is you know st- stability and making an income for myself and right. building a family. And um, I just I, I, don't, I always like telling this part of the story too. So at one point in my life, UC Davis, right, which is a college here in California, yep. that was like my mecca. That was the thing. I'm like, yo, if I can just get in, my grades good enough, I mean, well, my grades were great. The, the top but, of the tops. Yeah. yeah, so that's why I wanted to go yep. to med school there. That's where my uncle went. And I was like, yo, I, I just want to be a scholar to where I can get a scholarship, academic scholarship to go to UC Davis. Right. So this is how the world works. So I start playing this AAU team, and I'm also going to school at the time, going to a junior college. But at the same time, I'm also the video guy for the basketball team at the junior college during the year while I'm playing AAU in the summer. This is wow. very hard to, to to comprehend for a lot of people, but I'm I'm the not video playing. guy during the year. The I'm not video playing. Guy. I'm the video guy. I would literally come off the bus, and people would look like, "Oh my god!" Like the, the seven footer on the team, and then I bring my camera. They're like, "Yo, what the heck?" I'm setting up the, the big tripod. old camcorder. Was <laughs> I was really bad at, at recording games, by the way. Oh, yeah, I started to like the game because you're watching the game. I started. I started to like the games going back and forth, and then I was stopping. I started watching the game over there. On the <laughs> <other game. laughs> I was so. <laughs> oh man, that's what I, that's where I started, man. But two years later, um, I'm one of the top 150 kids under 18 in the country. Are you serious? Mm. So were you live, eating, and breathing basketball? I was. When you you must have court? worked so hard to get to that level. When you Full lay time. down in bed, thinking basketball. Off the that's right. I, all all the things that you hear about people say, like you know, I talk about Kobe and his him being an inspiration. It's just like. Just listen to the way he worked. And I was always like, I'm not working hard enough. It doesn't matter what I do. If I worked out three, four times a day, I still wasn't working hard enough. And then, like, this is how funny life is. So, top 150 kids, now I can go wherever I want it, right? Like, this is all colleges all over. And so that UC Davis that was my ceiling now became the floor. Hmm. And I can go literally anywhere in the country. Where And it's funny how these things come into your life. And that guy is saying that, you know, later on, I end up going to Vanderbilt, which is the only way I could justify turning down Harvard to my parents who are Nigerian academics, like I told you guys. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so I, I went to Vanderbilt. Then I had to start over. The reason why I call this Rebuilding the so Beast. So between being the videographer yeah, and getting accepted to Vanderbilt, how long was that time? To, uh, a year and a half. That's yeah. bonkers! Years, almost, yeah. Do you know how hard you would have to work yeah. to get to that from the cat holding the camera, videoing and watching to the guy on the other side now that Everything everyone's changed. watching? Everything changed. Too. And what was my it that body changed so changed. much? changed. Like my ment- I was able to fight through a little bit more stuff. Like I was running sprints now. I'm like, I would be at nighttime. This is like on my own. Like nobody's around me. Nobody, this is no, inc- like no, uh, no impetus. Nobody's pushing me to do this. On my own, just because I knew my wind was so bad, I couldn't run at all. Like I could, I would get tired so quickly. At nighttime, when my uncle goes to bed, I would just put my track shoes on and I would just get out there on the pavement. I was like, "Yo, I gotta learn how to run a mile. Like, I gotta get to a mile." I don't know why I, that was such a big number for me, but I was like, "Yo, I gotta get to a mile." I would run like point three then point four, and I would get so tired and I would walk the rest of the way. And then I would, next day I would come back and I just did it like every night. I just remember coming back. I remember the last day when I finally got to a mile because there, there was like this was a street I knew Especially that being I, seven feet tall. Yeah. No, running a mile. It was nighttime. Yeah, but, which, being, but seven feet tall running a mile, that's a lot because you're so yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. It's really hard. But I just had. I don't this see many drive. guys that are doing the marathons who are seven feet tall. Have you ever seen one? You will I've never. never seen one. You will never see me or catch me dead in one of those. Never. I tried. The I one did one once to impress Reve. I did. Did I did How the London Marathon? Go? We were, we were uh, we were just doing Band of Brothers, and 
we had been dating for like two or three weeks. And the London Marathon was, I think, on a Sunday. And Friday evening, I go to Reve's brother. I said, dude, I'm going to run the marathon. Come with me. We'll run this thing. I just want to impress your sister. He's like, all right. We get there. And after a mile, after, after seven miles, which was an hour and 40 into it, her brother, 6'7", another big candy, goes, dude, I can't run anymore. So I ran the last. I finished the race in 345. So that was what? the last almost 20, 26 miles, almost 20 miles in about two and a little over two hours. Who is this? You were running this three hours. For lo- two, three hours, 45 minutes. A marathon. Hours of, no. I cranked we, that thing up. Can we see some documentation? Yep, I have, I have, I have, <laughs> it, it was the most painful, but the whole time thinking, Reve's watching, Reve's at the finish line, Reve's at the finish line, and I get to the finish line. I told her to get there at like six hours. I didn't realize I was going to do it in 345. And I finally get back to the apartment. She's like, well, you're, you're back. I, I was going to go with six hours. And goes, I just wanted to go as fast as I could for you. And I did it. And I wow. think I still get the medal. I think about that all the time. Wow. But now six you, foot tall. But you got doing the Doing a marathon. I got the you girl. You got the girl. You hey, got the that's prize. the. <laughs> yeah, you got the prize. So, right. so stupidity sometimes is a great thing. No, man. So you, I you believed that I could do something, right? You believed from this kid who is a videographer from Nigeria is now the top 150 and goes to Vanderbilt? Self-discipline and determination. Then we'll, we'll, we'll talk later about how you get to the pros and what happened there. Your number and your your draft pick and your rings and. I think I think in every you are the American dream. I mean seriously. Time. I mean you you got to be using even that video experience. I mean you still use all those lessons today. Which which which, go, which goes back to we, 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 we were I, talking I about it earlier. Talking about that too. The greatest thing about America. This is why it's the greatest country in the world is because the opportunities are there for you. And if you work hard enough and play by the rules great things will happen. If you think everything should come to you for free and you're entitled to things, that's not the American way. That's not the American dream. You didn't think anything was owed to you. Mm. And you worked so hard to create something for yourself, which is, in fact, the American dream. It's so funny because I think people don't really realize, you know, when they, people have this argument about the best country in the world or not, the, whatever it is, like, right. you got to go live other places so That's you right. can understand what people are really going through. I think growing up in Nigeria, understanding, you know, scarcity, understanding that there's people really starving out there in the world and there's no hope for food. Like, there's nothing, you know. And so leaving that and coming here. And even like I told my brother this, my my younger brother came to visit me this weekend. Patrick and Patrick, yes. And so Patrick and I, like, we spend time together. And as a big brother, I always feel like it's important for me to like to impart whatever thing I've learned. I, I got to tell my brothers because I to. wanted to help them. So every once in a while, I just go to Santa Monica. Why, well, if I'm having a bad day, I'll go to Santa Monica Beach. I used to watch Santa Monica Beach on TV all the time. They watch. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I don't remember what it was, but I just I just remember like. I used to see it on TV all the time, and just I didn't think it was a real place. I just thought it was like some, like you know, something magical. Right. And so now, like I'm here, and I'm just like it's free. Like you just go walk up and down. And it's so peaceful and so calming for me on the, on every bad day. I think just realizing that I'm living in the thing I used to pray about. That you know? is inspiring. Yeah. Incredible. So, something so simple as that that you might take for granted if you've driven right. by it a thousand times. That's right. That's I don't take any of this stuff for granted. I don't take friendships for granted. I don't take food for granted. I don't like, I don't like all this stuff to me. I think there's just a, there's a super, there's just amazing amount of gratitude that I have for my journey. But I also wonder sometimes like, is this supposed to be hard for you to appreciate it? Because when people have it easy, like when you are born here and you just don't know anything, like you don't, you can't really right. appreciate it because it's like, I know it's, it's here. I, it's, I've always had it. You know, so for me, I think coming from Nigeria, and then, like, my journey doesn't stop, right? Like, I go to college, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't, like, I don't just become good, and that's, no, because everybody else in my college was great. That's right. You they were all top 150, top 100 players. That's right. I was actually the lowest ranked one. Were you really? Yeah. But you got to rise. So, so shout out to Steve Chang, my best friend, who was, he actually, he came from Cameroon the same time I came from Nigeria. Steve was really good. Like, he was, like, Steve used to bust my tail every day in practice. And so... I'm playing with all these guys, and my first year, I don't play at all. I was a red shirt. That means I'm just a practice player, right? That's how like how much better than me everybody else was when that's I got to college. So that's why I tell the story of rebuilding because when like when you start over, you always you there is this thing, there's this little bit of a gap between where you are and where everybody else is. And when you see that, you sometimes we all get intimidated, right? And we say, man, like I'm not where I want to be. 
But my idea has always been like, if you watch my story and watch my journey, you understand. Like, by my third year in college, starting off as a practice player, my third year, I'm team captain, I'm all conference, I'm all these different things, obviously a starter, but then I'm also an NBA prospect by the end of that year. What changed? It's just work, man. Like, I, I just, I. I used to work like a like a mad person. Like I just wanted to be good so bad. I was a phone, I was on a phone call yesterday with this guy. He was kind of like a he was a friend. Like I, I didn't have any family over there either, right? So my family was in Nigeria at the time. So like I would cling to these different people, people I met at church or people. The guy who sold me my car, he was actually like a father figure for me. So like I would spend time with him and his sons. And so he called me yesterday. He was like, "Man, I haven't heard from you in a little while. How you doing?" I was like, "Man, I'm just you know I'm working, I'm traveling all over." And he was like, I saw you started doing the broadcasting thing now. I was like, yeah, like, I'm really enjoying it, and I want to be really good at it. He was like, man, you never changed, because I remember you back then when you were, like, 18, 19 years old. You were saying the same thing. I just want to be really good at this thing. And it's just like that's You want to be good at everything that you do. That's, that's, but that's what you're supposed to do yeah. in life. And there, there's a fearlessness to when you have that work ethic mm -hmm. and you know that God's got your back the fear kind of goes out the window because you know he's always going to be there for you. So through your struggles, you knew that he was watching out for you. And all you had to do is put in the time because you already had the faith, right? So when you work really hard and you have that faith, if you're really great at something, you find something, you're great at music, you're great at acting, you're great at basketball, you're great at being a doctor, you're great at a plumber, great at anything. If you want to be the best of that and you know that he's got your back, the only person that can stop you is you. So it's just putting in the time. Yeah, but that sometimes you can't see that, though. That's like, right. It's hard to see I mean, it. I'm it's sure, like, there are times where you get blind to it. Yeah, I'm sure sometimes there's been times in music where you're like, yo, like, even when you knew you were good at this thing, it's still, like, people still have to see and recognize the greatness. Man, I've had a thousand reasons over and over again to quit, and it's like, no, this is what I do. Like, I'm getting back up, like, this is what I do. This is what I love. It, It is, on some levels, it's an obsession. I'm obsessed with being better than I was yesterday mm. and I'm I, I've told him like I got a lot of buddies I prefer to hang with people that are way better than me I, I prefer wow. to be the underdog because it's like well how else am I going to be inspired to keep rising to the occasion to be wow I want to be where that guy's at I want to be I want to work hard I want to I want to create my own thing I want to always put in more yeah I've done some great stuff that was yesterday what am I doing today mm. how am I going to get further and we've kind of talked about it like at some point you're you're in competition with yourself that's the only person you're in competition you know what with. i mean i got a question about that though because we always strive to put ourselves around people who are doing better sometimes that's daunting because all you see is what everybody else is accomplishing what you're not accomplishing mm. in those moments then what do you how do you then fix that thing in your mind and i'm asking because I've had to do that a yeah, bunch of my times, but one. we're telling people the stories, right? Well, we, all, we all put people on pedestals at times. We do. You know, people who are in your own field think, oh my gosh, that's such and such. And in those moments, mm -hmm. those are the moments of weakness where you forget how unique you are. And once you give over to God, get, look, I'm, I'm a great actor. That's a fact. It's a talent that God gave me. I'm not a great joke teller. I cannot play a guitar very well. There are certain things I'm just not, I'm not very good with the computer. Hey, you're a funny guy, but, Neil. But I'm a funny guy. That's right. You know, <laughs> you know, but, you I was going to say. But, that's, yeah, but, that, but I know that's my talent. It doesn't make me special. I was just fortunate enough to find my talent that I'm really good at mm -hmm. and know that God's got my back through the ups and downs of it all because there's always ups and downs in any field, especially the fields that we've chosen. These are pretty ridiculous fields. If you told your buddies when you, know, when you were 9 or 10 years old, this is what I'm going to be when I grow up. Yeah. I, I know what it's like what? to get laughed at. Totally. Like, you, are you kidding? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's like, no, I'm not kidding. But you know, you, you may it, be right, you may be wrong, but I'm going to give it my all. That's right. And when you give it your all and believe wholeheartedly in yourself, all you can do is compete against yourself. Once you compete against somebody else, you've already lost the game. You play a game of pool, right? And I'm sitting against great a guy. Twilight Zone episode, by that, the way. Oh, game really? Of pool. Game of pool. I'm sitting there at a game of pool, and I know this guy's a really great pool player. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this guy's really good. Guess what's going to happen in that game? I'm probably not going to win that game. Mm. But if I think, all right, I can win this game. I'm a really good pool player. I can Let's just be calm and get through that's life. If you compete against anybody, I tell all my kids, Reve tells our kids, if you start competing against other kids, <gasps> you're on the basketball court, oh my gosh, that guy's really good, or that girl's really good, you know, when my daughter's playing volleyball, then you've already lost. 
You are unique. God created you for a reason. And if you're in this position and you're really good at something, just be the best that you can be and great things will happen. Look what happened to you, Festus. Man, y'all missed. If y'all didn't hear what he just said, I I will break it down again. Because there's this like, there's this famous meme of, um, I can't remember who the two, uh, who the other swimmer was, but the, the one who wins is Michael Phelps, right? And so there's one where he's going at it, right? He's going crazy. The guy in the next lane is looking at him. Right? He, for that one second, he turns his head to look and try to figure out how fast he's going, where he is in relation to him. But Michael Phelps is here. That's right. And so that, is, that really is, obviously, Michael Phelps won. And so the idea is, like, you were never supposed to be worried about him. Never. The journey was always about you and, like, how do I get to where I'm trying to get to? And then if you come second or you come first or you come third, like, all right, then you got to come back and do it again, but you have to keep being your best each time. But if you're so focused on the other person, that's energy that you just took away from you trying to pr- propel a little bit faster. You're looking away right. from where you need to be going. And I think maybe that was also why, because I didn't even like, I couldn't look at other people because I didn't know that I, it was possible for me to get them, get to them. That's right. Like, when I was in college and I was a redshirt freshman, like, I remember one day in the layup lines, and this is before the game starts, you're kind of warming up. I'm not going to play that game. But at this point, like, I'm an athlete, right? I'm doing all these dunks. I remember people on the other team, it was Mississippi State we were about to play, and people on the other team, they were laughing at me. They were like, oh, man, look at that dude over there. And they were, like, in my face, like, not, not in my face, but they are standing at half court, and they're like, yo, you're just a dunk, you're just a practice player, or practice dunker. I don't know what they, what they said. It's so funny because those moments for me are, like, Ooh, it's like I, it was in here. You dig deeper. Oh, it was in my, it was like at the bottom of the, I just stored it, you know? And I remember my junior year. I told you now, I'm team captain on all these things. So we go to the playoffs or we go, yeah, we're, I can't, it was an SEC conference. And actually, no, it was my sophomore year, my sophomore year. Now I'm playing a little bit. And we go to the SEC tournament and we play against Mississippi State, these same guys. Oh, and that's I don't really great. understand why. I think the guy who was playing in right front of me. before the game. Face, right. face, red, I don't got a red shirt on anymore, guys. Yo, <laughs> it was funny because I wasn't even playing well that year. Like, But for some reason, I had to start this game. I think somebody was hurt or something. And people were like, what happened? to f- Like, where did he come from? Because the things that he's doing in this game, we've never seen. And it's just this idea. I just had a little, like, there was just that thing that was sitting at the bottom of my heart that just, I saw them again. I was like, nah, <laughs> nah, not you guys. And so coming into the next season, my junior year, people already knew. Like, I think I put people on notice, those playoffs. So my junior year, I just came in, like, with that same confidence. that I was like, oh, I didn't even realize I could do this. I think that anger or that whatever it is propelled me a little bit. But I also give credit to my mom. Because in those moments where things were quiet or I started to doubt, she would always say the same thing to me. I would call my mom on the phone, nine-hour difference to Nigeria at the time. from, So I would wait till midnight or I'd call her in the morning. And the conversation was always the same. You don't pray enough. Go to church and sit in front of the, the altar and just talk to God. Tell God that what you need. And I never understood it. And I would do it anyway because it's my mom. I, you know, right. Nigerian. I don't question whatever You got to do what your mom said. said. And I would just go to church. And sometimes I would just fall asleep in church. I would just be sitting there praying or crying or whatever it is I was going through at the time. Because you got to remember, still lonely, still came from Nigeria, still like trying to figure this new culture out. I mean, you go to college and it's like a little bit more. And you're still trying to like, and I was very introverted at the time. That's a lot all at once. It was. And all the temptations of being an athlete at Vanderbilt. Yeah, but like when I first got to college, you know, it wasn't really that much temptation because they weren't really checking for me, right? And um, They were your junior year. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's a whole different story. Yeah, that's when the work really starts. Yeah. You should have like, when you walk into your house, anytime you're feeling down, you should have like a Mississippi State flag. And just look (laughs) at that thing and say, I got today. I got it. I'm good today. Oh, there's a bunch of other Mississippi State State flags. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I am sure. And, uh. you know, it's just, it, it's it's so funny because those moments, I, I, I really credit them because I would leave, I would come to church with this full heart. 
and I would leave, and I don't even know how to say it because I felt like I left with a full heart. But like I, I would come with this, like these burdens and all these things, and I would leave just feeling light. Exactly. And I didn't do anything. All I did was just pray you or sat up. there. I might even like go there to nap. I didn't even pray that right. day. That's right. But I just went there, and something about it would just lift my spirits a little bit for me to just go do some more work. And I just kept working, kept working, and you see the success. Graduated, you know, senior senior honor, uh, honor roll, my you know senior junior years, and all these different things, and so. Um, and then I get drafted. So can we go there now? We can go there now. Get drafted to the worst team in the NBA. Um, but you get drafted to the NBA. I get drafted in the NBA. What number did you go in the draft? I was number 30 in the first round. Can you believe that? Kid from Nigeria. They to- they coming over me. 14 years old who never even touched the basketball. Yeah. Not bad. I was number 30 that. in the first round. Not bad for that me first I day play. in Yuba City, huh? Yeah. The- <laughs> Yuba City, give it up. Uh, bad. I, I, well, the, the high school was Jesuit, Jesuit high school. If you just think of the, the logic to that. Are you throwing the ball the same way? That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, was, he was just throwing it down now. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit more, but yeah, it was more dunks on an athlete. <laughs> think of that. Yeah, think of that. From Nigeria to number 30 d- in... Six years? At 16 years old, they told me I couldn't play in high school. <laughs> oops. Big oops. They actually hate when I tell that story. I'm, sure, this is I'm a sure they Jesuit do. Jesuit High School sure. in Sacramento. I'm sure anyway, they, I'm sure that's they do. That's beside the point because that is important. I should think send it's them a important. Christmas card every year saying no, thank you. I, that is, like, that's real. I think people get so angry when people reject them. Like, you get so angry. Say, why, why didn't you believe in me? Everybody's not supposed to believe in you. No. Like, because... If you understood, like, if I knew how hard I need to work at the beginning, how hard I needed to work to it become successful, I wouldn't have done it. We've that was talked, insane. We've talked about that. No way. I got injured in college. I, I, no, I wouldn't. Uh, like, that was insane. It was, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of throwing up and keep going on the court. It was a lot of, like, dude, my, I went to the hospital in college my junior or senior year because I worked so hard. My eyes hard. Rolled, back right. in the, my, uh, rolled back in my head, and I had to go to the hospital for dehydration. Like, there's all this crazy stuff that you don't understand. When you watch people on the court and you watch people play this game, like, dude, making it to the NBA is one of the hardest things. Like, I, the numbers will tell you whatever the numbers are. Like, it's impossible. I think one in like 200,000 people or something will, at one in 200,000 players, high well, school players, well, the odds are will that ever good? put, yeah, that's right. Oh, well, 200,000 high school players will ever put an NBA jersey on. I'm not saying that they got to play a season, they got to play, put right. a jersey on, right? And it's it's and not really from Foot Locker. Yeah. Uh, real that's right. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> it's so I wild. got a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, you got some. <laughs> yeah, because Warriors jerseys or no, Lakers? No Warriors. Uh, that's, that is. We're gonna talk about the Warriors again. <laughs> getting that's that. a very important <laughs> point, I think, because we were we were talking. You know, sometimes parents will ask their kids are going to be graduating high school and they want to go into music, mm-hmm. and so they'll ask me when we talk to my kid, and it's like I'll tell them like, yeah, I'll scare them, because it's like if I can talk you out of your dream. I'm it doing you. I, I'm doing you a favor now, yeah. because you don't understand yet, and you may never, what it takes to get from here to here, right. and what you're going to go through that you have no idea is coming. And if you're not determined, no matter what, like you have to do this. This is this is who you are and who who you were born to be. Do pack here. it up. Pack it up now, because it, it's it's going to be so hard on you if you're not doing it for the sheer love and desire to yeah. do it. That's for getting the money, and all the other stuff. If you're doing it for that, you can make money doing a lot of be- easier, easier things, things than this. But, but if, like the three of us, we had the dream of being successful in the things that we chose. So at some point, yeah, I, I you thank all the people that laughed because so they, they helped you get to where you are. Hard. Yeah. I had a cat in high school, in college, when I was playing first base at Syracuse. This guy on my team used to scream up from the bench, McDonough, I want your job! And it used to keep me so fast focused it's those little i should send him christmas cards <laughs> yeah, but, but those are the people along the way that make you either doubt yourself and you fall mm-hmm. apart or build yourself up to make you a beast mm-hmm. and once you get that that fearlessness of being for me and being in front of a camera you being on a court you being on stage you <laughs> that fearlessness of being able to do it because we all get the we get the pits in our stomach before Absolutely. before game time or but that's anything. What, that's the love but too, that's though. the good part yeah. that's the you know I tell kids like well when I get nervous I'm like that's good that means you're human you're yeah. alive if you're an artist you gotta care if you don't care well then you're not gonna play that hard if you're not you might be getting complacent you might want to look at that that's like, that's no. like I think about no. The, <laughs> no. <laughs> no no I think about that Batman the, you know the Dark Knight part where he was in the cave and they were talking about how he needed to have fear to get out of the cave right 
And, like, that fear gives you a little bit extra, right? LeBron sprinting down the court, and I hate that I'm using this analogy, to block Iguodala's shot. Like, you're afraid of what it looks like to lose. And so, like, um, you know, and, and even there's so many instances like that in my life, but the fear has always kept me going. The fear of not being good enough, the fear or the the anger of people telling me I'm not good enough, right? That stuff inspired me. But then at this stage in my life, you know, okay, I'll tell the rest of the story. So I get drafted to the worst team in the NBA. It's the Golden State Warriors. And the year before, they wore, they won the least amount of games in the NBA. So Steph Curry is dealing with an injury. Klay Thompson, that was his rookie year the year before. And then he comes in the second year. I'm drafted with Draymond Green, Harrison Barnes, Kent Bazemore was one of my teammates. We had, you know, young studs on the team. Um, and it's just we start what off with this dream. Yeah. What a team. It was it was like we didn't know. Like we didn't even I think there's a there's a there's a um there is something about being naive and young where you set a goal and you have this dream that I want to accomplish this thing. You don't even know what it takes. We say oh, we want to win an NBA championship. We didn't know what it was going to take to win one, but just putting that goal out there, we just started to work in that direction. And we started to just, we just believed. And I remember we made the playoffs for the first time or second time in 20 years, and that team did. And when we made the playoffs in 2013, nobody, we're playing against the Denver Nuggets. We Nobody picked us to win that series. Literally, they were like, these guys are too young. They just knew guys on the block. It's fun. Steph Curry is, is you know, doing all these amazing things. But And I remember Mark Jackson at the time, who was the coach, saying Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, the best shooting backcourt in the history of the NBA. They, like, they, his, 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 um. He wasn't wrong. At the time, he, people were like, what do you, we don't understand what you're saying. This is the stupidest thing we've ever heard. Da, 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 da. They, I mean, there's something to be said about vision. When somebody has a vision for themselves, but then it's a whole nother level when you have a vision of other people like, yo, you're, right. you are great. That's I see true. the greatness in you. I see you every day. I see the work that you put in. And you guys have this vision and this thing about you that I don't know what it is. Mark Jackson played in the league for, what, 18 years? He knew what greatness was. Played next and to Reggie Miller. And he saw it in you guys. He saw it in us. He played next to Patrick Ewing. Like, he knew greatness. And so when he saw it in this team, he said, dude, we can win a championship. Like, nah, you know? But so, unless you say it or write it down, I found out in life, it cannot become a fact. Mm. If you say, I'm going to be the best at this, mm. if you say it out loud, especially if other people hear you say it. It is written. It is, that's, that's it. And if you don't achieve that, you failed for yourself. Mm. But if you're always going after that lofty goal of being the greatest at what you do, that's the only chance you're going to get there. Yeah. Habakkuk 2 and 2. Write the vision and make it plain so that he who, see, who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarries, which means it takes a long time, wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. Amen. And so true. Truth. That, for me, like, you know, I, like I said, there's so many parts to this. I, I won a championship in college as well. And I remember the start of my senior year, we wrote it down. He said, what do you want as your vision? We wrote down championship. How does it look like? Work it backwards. When we win my senior year, and there's a whole lot that went into that. I, like, I tore my knee up. People thought I would never play again. This is in college, my senior year. I ended up coming back six weeks later, just like, just shared determination, right? And we ended up winning. We beat Anthony Davis. The, that was the first time they really ever lost that season. They had lost one game, one only other game, but that game was a buzzer beater. We actually beat them. <laughs> so if I ever stopped at the start of this journey, and somebody told me you can't be, and I listened to them, I would have never seen all these other things. But it's not even just about me. Like, I was the key part to the college team. I was the key part to the Golden State Warriors team that went on three years later to win an NBA championship. And so when I tell these stories, like, I tell this story not just because about me. I don't want you guys to look at me and say, wow, you're doing this thing. No, that's not the point. Well, I tell these the stories. You touch, yeah. I tell the story because... When I shine my light, I'm giving you permission to shine yours. That's and right. understand that there's right. no glory to be found in playing small. I don't care what people say about what you can and can't do. That's their vision. That's their vision for themselves. If somebody, God puts a dream in your heart, it wasn't really like, it wasn't about them. They, they weren't supposed to see the dream, right? It's in your heart. If the thing is waking you up in the morning and telling you, like, yo, you got to go keep doing this thing, 
that's your dream. That's your vision. And so you telling them, like, and them telling you, no, it's not going to happen, that's because it's, it wasn't for them to see, you know? And that's so right. that's kind of how I look at it. And people's lives were changed. Communities were touched because I chose to continue to pursue, pursue that, that dream that was in my heart. And so I want other people to understand that this is my journey. This is the thing I was able to do. But for you guys, there's something that's in your heart that people are telling you that you can't do. I don't care what it is, and I really don't care how old you are. Because if That's Colonel true. Sanders ever listened to people when they told him he couldn't fry chicken, at 60 years old, that's when he got his franchise, KFC. Was he really 60? 63. A young 63, but yes. A young 63. Wow. His face is everywhere. I was just in South Africa two weeks ago. KFC all over the place. Oh, the KFC Rounders? I go to South, when I go to South Africa with Rube, they're so they're so good. KFC Rounders, we're playing yeah, KFC Rounders here. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite quotes is, things that people say cannot be done have already been done. Things people say that are impossible are about to be done. Mm. And it's true. I mean, there's planes in the sky. Man wasn't supposed to fly. Nope. Well, we fly. We, so. had, we had cell phones at one point. That was connect, they were connected to the wall. <laughs> and some dude was like, yo, I really want to be I'm able to talk on the phone while I, go talk, while I go grab something from the car. Yep. And at the we time, they were like, dude, what are you talking about? How can you? They were like, no, I have. I want to use Bluetooth, or I want to do these things to connect with people. Yeah, Going so back to what you said, I, I love these, these inspiration things that come every day, little quotes from the Bible. And this one's too. 2 Samuel 22, 7. In my distress, and you're talking about all your distress, all the stuff that you were going through, all the doubts, all the things that you thought there's no way I can do. I'm 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 Looking at that cat one. from Go Mississippi ahead. State laughing at you, and you're just dunking. You didn't have anything else. Mm. I called on the Lord. Yes, I called to my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. My cry came into his ears. Mm. So when you are suffering, when you don't think you've got what it takes, in any of us here, any of us out there, when you don't think you, you've got to do that job to be a great husband, to be a great dad, to be a great anything in life, and when you're all alone, you think it's just you, when you cry out to him, he will always be there. I don't care if you're Christian. I don't care if you're Muslim. I don't care if you're Taoist. I don't care if you're agnostic. I don't care if you're whatever you are. Mm. Once you open up to him as you did, you went from a kid from Nigeria to top 150 players in the country in high school to a champion. Oh, dang. I forgot the best part of the story. And Man, it's coming. what am I doing? And it's coming. Okay. Right? Let's go back to this. Oh, here we go. Kobe day today, 824. Um, the best part of the story, who was the first person I ever watched? Kobe. Kobe. I watched the Sacramento Kings versus the L.A. Lakers, right? My uncle looks at me during this game and says, you never know, someday you'll be here on the court with them. My first game in the NBA no. was against the Los Angeles Ooh. Lakers. And was your uncle at the game? My uncle was not at the game. The game was in, um, it was a preseason game, and it was in uh, Ontario. And my uncle works in U.S. City. And I wish he was. I couldn't sleep the night before because I'm like. How could you? I feel like it, this is not a real yeah, story. Yeah, it's surreal. And so I'm walking, like the game is starting. I'm starting, right, at the time. And I'm a rookie and starting, so that's actually also rare. But I'm starting. And I'm walking up to the center of the court before the game starts. And I just see this dude walking towards me. Like it's, It felt like it was happening in slow-mo. And he's walking towards me, and he's putting his arm out. And I'm trying to pull my arm out, but it's like... Can't move. I can't move. I'm, sh I'm shaking. And I, that game is, is so crazy to me because two things happened in that game. One of them is when the game started, I was a fan. Like, I'm watching like, damn, good job, Kobe. Like, good right. Hey, nice shot. Pal. Oh, <laughs> no, wrong team. <laughs> right? How can you not be? That's right. And it's so funny because, you know, he inspired everybody. Everybody. My whole generation of players, you know, Michael Jordan inspired his generation. Right. And then he was the guy that inspired my generation. My generation includes LeBron, right, who be ends up being a competitor for him and greatest players ever. But that's what we're supposed to do, right? Greatness inspires greatness. Mm -hmm. And so Kobe, I mean, that legacy is crazy, right? Like when Kobe is, when Kobe tore his Achilles, he did it against our team. He was playing against us. Really? 
he came back from his Achilles and had an amazing comeback, and he was playing, did whatever he did. You know, he was incredible. When he was retiring from the NBA, there was another game on at the exact same time that he was playing his last game in the NBA. What game was that? I'm sure you were playing it. Yeah. Our team was going on to break Michael Jordan's record for most wins in the history of the NBA. Wow. No way. I'm, I can't write the story. No, That's There's incredible. a lot of good writers in this town. You can't make I can't that write stuff the up. story. Like, like, it's the most crazy. Like, dude, we just made history. We beat the Memphis Grizzlies in 2016, last game of the season, right? We won 73 games. We beat Michael Jordan's record 72. After this game was over, we just made history. Like, you remember those young guys that started? You know the first thing we did? We all ran to the locker room. Yeah. What did Kobe do? And even, like, kind of makes me a little emotional when I talk about it because I'm like, that's what he meant to us, you know? Like, when people see us crying on TV about, like, this guy, it's not, it wasn't just about basketball. It was like, he was somebody that gave light to, to people who didn't have the light. They couldn't see it. And so we borrowed his, and we watched him work, and we saw him fight through a lot of adversity because he's human and he came back and he kept coming back and he called that the mamba mentality and like that's what we do as humans like nobody escape free like he without sin throw the first stone like we're always gonna we're gonna have moments where we falter and we're gonna but he never stopped he never stayed there right he kept getting up and he kept getting up and he kept showing us what it was like to get up and i'm like man like you know i had a chance to to meet Kobe in 2018, 2018 when I moved to LA the first time. I was doing my rehab here. And we have the same rehab person who worked with him throughout his career. And so she was working to set up a meeting with us because I really wanted to tell him this story. And I, I was like, man, you have no idea what you did for me and what you continue to do for me today because at the time I had right. a really hard injury. We we're supposed to meet I remember I had to go in for an emergency surgery because I had some other stuff going on. Um, so I had to move again. So I was like, oh, when I come back to LA after I recover from this in 2000, I came back in 2020. So the fall of 2018, I leave, come back in the, in the spring of 2020. And so like the weekend I moved here was the Grammys weekend. So I text her like, yo, I just landed after this whole crazy celebration and everything that you know, people are doing in town. I would love to try to figure out a way to meet with Kobe again. She was like, all right, cool. We'll set it up, right? I moved here on Thursday. Friday, Saturday, I woke up on Sunday, helicopter crash. And so one of the things that I try to also tell people is when you have a moment to tell somebody what they mean to you, say it in the moment. Like, we always feel like we have time. And I'm not even the best at it yet. Even with the lessons I've learned, I still like, it's still hard for me to always tell people, oh, you mean this to me. I love you, man. Like, that's something that's still hard for me to say. But I say, like, when you get a chance to tell people what they mean to you, do it in the moment. That's right. You get a chance to do the thing that you want to do, go do that thing. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. We're here for a good time, <laughs> not a long time. <laughs> Sometimes it's so. You may, you know, Kobe, who tortured my Celtics so many times over the years. The thing that I, that I admired so much about Kobe was his humility and his humanity. And there he was. Look, we're all sinners. We all do stupid stuff. Every single. There's not one person who's perfect in this world. We talked about it before. You know, everyone says that Jesus was was perfect. Well, you know, he lit up that temple when people weren't doing the right things in temple he tore it to shreds so no one is perfect kobe wasn't perfect but i don't know how many times that guy went to church after everything that went down on how often he was in a catholic church and how how often he was praying and trying to be the best that he could and to lead by example and be the right guy not just be the greatest basketball player he could yeah. be but to be the best human being that he could be yeah. and a dad that he could be and a husband they could be, and a coach they could be, and all the things that he did. There were a few guys like Kobe Bryant out there because he was the greatest there was at the time. May have been the greatest of all time. Had some things that tripped him up, but like all of us, 
it's how you get back up after you trip, mm-hmm. how you dust yourself off, how you conduct yourself as a man or a woman. What are the things that you do when you overcome those sins? That's what dictates who you are as a human being. And what he did was just unbelievable. Truly magnificent. Kobe Day, man. Kobe Day. Well, it's like it's, that's one of those byproducts where if you're just focusing on your goal, your dream, you don't realize you inspire people every day. And you probably don't don't see it because you're you're in it, you're focused, you're moving this way. But it's like every once in a while, just like just like for you, yeah, you you get it back. People say, man, you know, there's one time that I was feeling <laughs> da da da, and it's like, yeah, that's not what you do it for. But man, that sure brings it all into focus, doesn't it? I go to dinner a couple of nights ago, and this lady, because um, our, our job is not to try to figure out who all we're impacting with our greatness. Our job is just to be great. That in itself will inspire yeah, other stuff people. works itself out. I was at dinner the other night, so I go to see my friends stop by uh, the hotel bar. And so we get some dinner over there, me and my brother, me and my friend, da, 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 and we leave. When we leave, she says bye. So when we're leaving, she texts me. She's like, hey, there's a guy at the bar who was who said such nice things about you. I was like, oh, cool, that's awesome, right? So the next day, she also she calls me. She's like, oh, she texts me. She's like, hey, you have time for a quick call? I said, okay, yeah, sure. She's like, yo, no, I can't even text you what he said or how he what his reaction was because I just need to tell you how, what the whole scenario was. So when I left, she was like, wait, when when she, when, I, when we left, the guy said, was that Festus Azili? She said, yeah. And he says, I, I recognize his laugh, <laughs> which is funny because I'm like, how would you? So I've been doing this podcast, and I've been doing the TV gig broadcasting, right, which is a whole new adventure right. for me. And he says, man, that guy watching him every day, I, I don't even know. Like me and my wife, we just love this dude. And the energy he comes with every day and the way that he is, the way he continues to show up positively through his injury or through his journey it inspires us so much. And, man, we wish we could have said something to him. So, like, and even hearing something like that, I'm like, dang. I'm not even meaning to. This is just me. And but that's the beauty of you, Festus. Since the second that Ravay and I met you a year ago, mm. the energy that comes out of you is different. The energy that comes out of you is a grounded man who's worked hard, who's achieved goals that no one could possibly fathom. And you do it remembering him the whole walk. Not many cats do that. And I love you for it. But that's that's our job too, you know. Like the the point of me even saying it. By the way, thank you. The point of me saying it is like we don't even have to do anything. Like you, there's nothing special about us. Like there's nothing that we're supposed to come out here to. Like just do the thing that's in your heart and just be great and just be a kind person. And like you have no idea who you're gonna inspire along the way. It could just be somebody just watching you on TV or watching your podcast, and you inspire them to take one more step. And you don't have to worry about that. That just, that, that happens if you're doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. I think we're so, wrapping it up. Yeah, that's so. A, that's a good one, recognized on your left. That That's probably the last thing you're expecting crazy, to right? <laughs> right? Well, you're the one that always gives the good quotes and the good inspirational uh, uh, saying. So we gotta, we gotta leave with something you got to leave them with something powerful right now, Neil. Give it up. No, that's you. No, that's you this time. You're the guest. Come on, coach. My turn w- was when I was the guest <laughs> on your show. By the way, y'all have to listen to that podcast. because It was awesome. He is a rock star, and that's why I want to give you- I didn't even know what a podcast was. <laughs> <laughs> See? And then doing the podcast look, inspires you to do the podcast. You inspire me all the time. It's look at incredible. that. Once you hang out with folks that inspire you, what's better than that? Reve inspires me all day long, all the time. The five kids inspire me. I get to hang out with really great people who inspire me. You guys inspire. We've known each other for ten days. Has, has it been that many it's years? Been that long. We've known wow. each other for one year. You know, when you when, when you can be around, like you were saying earlier, be around people that make you better. You're doing God's work. Hanging out with you, I'm doing God's work. Like you said, you don't have to do anything, but just by hanging out with you. By being, it, yeah, being it, real. It falls off. It, it, it's, it just seeps off when you hang out with people and, like that. And it's infectious and inspiring. And it just, yeah, it, it, you radiate it. You radiate it. And it's inspiring to be around, to hear, yeah, to hear your laugh. Like, I know exactly what those people right. are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> See, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, 
kind of goaded him into into giving the last words. That's so right. There you go. You thank got, you. you. Got you got it. Got it. You <laughs> got it. That's it. <laughs> Yo, thank you, man. That was awesome. That was awesome. Thanks for being here. The Neil McDonough Show. Go Celtics. <laughs> Some things will never change. Some things will never 2022 change. 2022 Warriors go and stay champ, baby. You can take go the boy out of Boston, but NBA you can't champs. take the Boston out of the boy. I got, I got one basketball shirt, and it's a Golden State Warriors shirt. That's what... And, and it was uh, if anybody's out there, I'm, look, I'm looking for a new sidekick yeah, on the show. That's what I'm talking <laughs> and, about. And I will say, it was a hand-me-up from my younger brother, and I still have it. Are you it. serious? Yep. 